Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Lori Baptist Church on this beautiful Lord's Day. I was talking to Randy when we were in the back, and he, he said, what a wonderful, beautiful day it is. He said, God makes them all, good and bad. But I told it, pointed out to him that it's always a good day somewhere, right, around the world, right? It's always a good day somewhere. And it's a bad wind that blows the same way all the time. But uh, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Uh, amen to that. If you will look at your worship guide today, you will note that, uh, first of all, that our Deacon of the Week is Bill Davis. Bill, you can raise your hand over there. Amen. Thank you, Bill. If you have a need during the week and you can't get in touch with anyone here at the church office, uh, Bill is available and there's his telephone number right there in the bulletin. So uh, be free, feel free to give him a call. He's also praying for me today as I, as I preach. Uh, one of the deacons, that he, uh, deacon of the week always was asked to pray for the preacher during the sermon. So Bill, I appreciate and covet your prayers during this time. Um, notice that um, the ladies are beginning a Bible study on prayer, and that's going to begin in October. And um, there's a sign-up sheet for those interested, and the dates and the times and the place and all that will be made uh, known to you once um, people have signed up for it. So be aware of that. And um, then... We, uh, because of, of schedule conflicts, we're going to move the monthly Monday morning movie to the second Monday um, in um, the next three months during the, during the, uh, the rest of the year. And these are faith-based movies. And I promise to you, those who attended the last one, it will not be two hours long, okay? It was, it was a long movie, and, but I'll pick one out that's, that's uh, easier to watch uh, than that one. But that, uh, we, we uh, get together and have lunch afterwards, so we hope that you will use this opportunity to come and watch this uh, movie, but also to encourage others maybe to come or bring someone, an invited guest, so they can uh, come to the church in a, in a non, um, uh, I guess non-intimidating way. You know, sometimes when you come to church and around a bunch of new people, especially in a church our size, where we all want know each other and we know everybody's background and who we are and who their great grandparents were and all that stuff, kind of kind of intimidating. So it's good to kind of do, do something other than that. And so that's what that's what this is geared for. So I hope you take advantage of that. And then uh, many of you have noticed we've got a new phone tree system that's up and running. Uh, so uh, be aware of that, and it uses different numbers than you're used to, so you have to program your smartphone or phone to be able to pick it up or who it is, but it is the numbers that are listed in your bulletin, those are the ones that will be coming for the phone tree. So um, that's uh, a new uh, service that we have now. Um, I just want to uh, give thanks to God uh, for working in our community, in our churches in our community. Um, I talked to Pastor Richard across the street at Revolution, and they have a bunch of young people where we don't, and they're, they're, they're itching to do things and to work, and uh, they've not done all the things they could do over there, and he says, I, you know, when he came to visit uh, the church and look over the buildings, and I looked at his, and he says, you know, those front steps out here, we could power wash, pressure wash those things for you, and I uh, talked to the deacons, and they approved it, and uh, they're going to come on the 30th of September. Um, and, and pressure wash uh, front steps of our church. Praise God. Amen. We're, we're, and I'm sure we'll have opportunity to do some things for them. And I think we're going to partner with them and with the um, Grace Point International Church on doing mission projects together. Uh, we're going to, uh, the Richard and I and, and um, uh, and Marty are going to meet together for lunch and, and discuss some of these things that we can do together for the cause of Christ in our community. So it's always good when God's people can work together uh, for good things. Uh, amen. 
Our, worship, our call to worship this morning is found in your worship guide. Join me as we begin our worship service. Thanks be to Christ Jesus who has called us into service and enlisted us uh, in a new expedition. Let us surge forward as comrades in the company of Christ. Let us make preparations for a spiritual journey. We do not know just what we may encounter. The mysteries of God are many, and the will of God is often hard to track. Shoulder your packs and gear. The Spirit will be our guide. No enemy will prevail against the church of Jesus. We are ready to map out the uncertain terrain. We have our orders. It is enough for us to know that we start out with a perfect guide who would even give his life for us. Amen. Let's join together as we sing hymn number 282, Living for Jesus. Please stand as we sing together.
Before I have the Old Testament lesson this morning, uh, I know that you are aware that the COVID uh, occurrences are up again. And uh, my wife Janet uh, brought us some home tests. If you would like to have one of these, if you go to the grocery store, they're going to cost you money. But these are available for you. I'm going to put them down here. If you would need one, uh, please uh, take those. Uh, if you know somebody who's sick or you might be in need, those are available to you here at the church. And also at the public library. You can get them. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Exodus. Um, story of Moses and the Israelites. It's from the 16th chapter, verses 2 through 15. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord, or Yahweh, said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumblings against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. So Moses and Aaron, uh, so Moses told Aaron, say to the entire assembly, Excuse me, and say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in a cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat. And in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is this? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare for prayer.
trust and obey. Shall we pray? Lord, in the quietness of this moment, we humble ourselves to you and before you. And Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us to get us ready to come to live with you. Lord, thank you for sending us the leadership that we have. Thank you for giving us gifts, spiritual gifts of wonders. As we continue to tell folks about you, Jesus. And Lord, we have those that are that are coming to this country that need help. And Lord, we pray that you'll give us the guidance and direction that you want us to go. And thank you again for your love, your mercy, and your grace. For it is in your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, LC. Now, some of you know him as Luther, but his family calls him LC. And as pastor, I get to be in all your families. So, L thank you, LC. Thank you, LC. Appreciate that prayer. Our, our epistle lesson this morning is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. In a graveyard, a Crescent Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky, um, there are a number of the previous um, professors and dignitaries of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary buried there, very prestigious cemetery. And um, the, maybe the name A.T. Robertson rings a bell to some of you, maybe not. Uh, Dr. Robertson was, um, was a uh, New Testament Greek scholar um, and his books a hundred years ago were top sellers. Um, in fact, the, the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark where Harrison Ford plays the main character, many of the attributes from that movie are based on A.T. Dr. Robinson. In fact, uh, his his class uh, was one that was uh, people tried to get into. And it was waiting list for people to try to get in his classes. He was so popular, and uh, it was uh, he, he had an office where students would line up out the door just to have a moment to talk with him. And sometimes, like in the movie, he had to escape by going out the window. He was uh, a Greek theologian rock star a hundred years ago before they had rock stars he was very popular um, and was world renowned and his scholarship and he married the daughter of the president of the seminary brought us well you go to the cemetery there's this huge statue uh, from that's the floor it's, it's still going up here with brought us name written on it and, and as the president of the as president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, A.T. was buried also in that same family plot but his plot um, is, is very auspicious. All it has is a cross on um, the ground and the words that we find in our scripture today. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. That's all that he had. Cross without even his name 
but those words. Paul writes again, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know, for I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved. And that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's stand again as we sing hymn number 184, Jesus is all the world to me.
Our gospel lesson today is um, tough. One of those tough passages of Jesus. Matthew 20, 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and, and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. And he asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and received a denarius. When those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous. And then Jesus ends. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christine's keeping you on your toes, literally, right? Well, know where it's going to show up, the doxology. Notice the doxology was given after the choir sang and not after the sermon. You notice that? I noticed that, Christine. It's uh, interesting that this text comes up in the lectionary during the time that workers across the country are striking. Hmm? Uh, most of us have been raised to believe that uh, if we work hard and do a good job, we're going to be paid, paid well or fairly. Amen? You know the story. There it is. The landowner goes to look for workers. He needs his vineyard taken care of. Now, you know anything about having a vineyard? You know, or anything, if you're growing anything, when things get right, you need to take care of business. You need to be removed. You don't want to let them sit there and rot on the vine or on the plant. Nothing worse than seeing a bunch of wonderful looking tomatoes that are rotten because you didn't get out there and pick them at the right time. Well, same thing here. This land order needed people's help. He needed help. He needed to get his harvest collected. It needed to be done. And he was willing to go out early in the morning at, at 6, go out at 9, go out at 12, go out at 3, and then go back out at 5 when there's only one hour left. Why? Because the harvest had to be taken up. He didn't want it to rot on the vine. It needed to be done. So he went. And uh, he paid them a fair wage for the day, a denarius. Was the, was the amount in Jesus' day that was a good salary for a day's work. A 12-hour shift. That was what they worked. Um, and that was considered, uh, that was the day's wage. That's what you needed to pay people for their work for those days. But this particular landowner was so grateful for their work and getting that harvest done that he paid everybody the same. Those who had worked 12 hours got the same pay as those who only worked one. Now when we hear that story, we were like those workers who worked all day. Hey, that's not fair. I've worked 12 hours and then this lazy so-and-so been sitting around at the marketplace shows up and works an hour and gets the same wage that I do? That's not right. That's not fair. Apparently, someone this week in our community thought that was not right either because they changed my sign twice. They opened the door and took the knot out and threw the letters on the ground. So it said, it's fair, but they couldn't get the door, the hinge back down right. And so it was just standing up. Two days in a row I came up here and someone had done that. James said. <laughs> and then Jesus has the audacity to say, after telling this parable, that should offend us all in a way. He says, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Mm. I read about a golf tournament um, that was played and the golf tournament was a hole in one tournament. And so people would, would uh, it was a fundraiser but it was a tournament that people would put money in to take a shot at uh, a green that was about 90 yards away. You know, for those who play golf, that's not too far, you know. Most people can, can hit a club that far. Um, one fella hit a shot that was so bad that it hit the, the scores tent, bounced off it, 
went back into the fairway and hits a ball and rolls up one inch from the cup. Now, it was, it was, it was whoever was closest to the pin. It didn't have to be a hole in one, but it was one inch. And another fella hit a shot that was so beautiful. Lifted it way up in the air and hit before the pin and then hit the pin directly and bounced back six inches. A beautiful shot. Well, guess who won? <laughs> the one that was closest to the pin. The bad shot. Is that fair? That's why they say in golf it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> um, it's not fair. I, I don't think anybody here in this room would think that's fair, but apparently maybe there's some that think everything's fair, but it is not. If anybody but Jesus had said this, uh, we'd be up in arms. People would be protesting, saying, talking about the unfairness of this situation. Uh, if this had been another religious leader other than Jesus in our church, people would, would uh, be worried about his salvation. Because we're confirmed capitalists. We believe we're in that process of, in our society. People who work all day should be rewarded for their labors and their efforts. What was Jesus thinking? That's why this is a hard passage. What was going on in his mind? Now, there are workers' rights. That's why there's protests today. And people, people picketing lines. And it, 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 it's just not fair to treat people like that. Mark this down. And get your pen out, whatever you want to do. Put this in the notes. Mark it down. God is not fair. God's not fair. If fairness is what you're looking for for God, then you should look somewhere else. If you come to hear Jesus teach us about fairness, you're coming to the wrong place can't expect fairness from God. If that's what we needed from God, fairness. Now this might get me in trouble in some other churches. If that's what you're expecting from God is fairness, then you would not need Jesus at all. This is the heart of of the gospel. That we do not deserve salvation. It's not written up that humanity is going to have a free ticket to heaven. Sin blocks us from God. But Christ came into the world cheat sin and evil and death and give us the opportunity if we believe in him and have faith in him and work for him no matter how long or how short it is that we will have salvation now the Old Testament is all about fairness and write that down. The Old Testament is all about fairness. That's what it's about. If you read that, it's, things have to be fair. The Jews had another word for it. They called it justice. God needed to be just. Above everything else, they believed in a just God. That God was just and would work things out in the world. And that way... You could always determine what was right and what was wrong. There was good and bad. There was evil and godliness. And 
if someone did good and was righteous, they would be rewarded. But if someone was evil and sinful, then they would be punished. Not what was, that's what they believed in the Old Testament. Uh, and, and, you know, that's fair, right? But uh, the problem with it in that system is it doesn't work. Remember Jesus said, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Stuff just happens to everybody. Whether you're good or whether you're bad whether you pray or whether you don't. Whether you believe or whether you don't. There's going to be good things and bad things that's going to happen to us all. Now, we can say, okay, that's true in this world. But in the next, it's going to be different. Right? Hitler is going to burn forever in hell. But Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, we're going to see them in heaven. Amen? And there lies your justice. Um, the only problem is, here's another question for you right now. What is the dividing line? Where, where's, where's the line between whether you deserve hell or whether you deserve heaven. I guess we could all agree if someone breaks into your house, points a gun at you to steal money from you so they can go and buy drugs, well that's probably a bad person, right? What if it's your child? Are they, are they beyond all grace? Are they beyond God's forgiveness? Are they beyond love? I don't think we would say so. Um, what if it's uh, a company president that steals millions of dollars from the company? and takes away people's benefits that work in that company to steal that money. Are they deserving of hell? Well, what if they're also a deacon in the Baptist church? Does that give them some credit? Maybe they've done some nice things with the money they had. Maybe they supported their church with that money. Where's Where's the dividing line? What's fair? It's difficult to apply fairness or goodness or righteousness or evil in every situation. And that's because God is not just. He is generous. We have a generous God who loves us and created us for his glory and sent his son to die for us that we might have everlasting life in him. He's not just. He's for us. He's generous towards us. Well, what about these people who live this wild life all their life and then when they're on their deathbed make a confession of God. They've lived this wild life and they've ruined people's lives and they've done these terrible things and they were mean and ugly to people. They said rotten things. What about them, God? Are you going to let them when they're getting ready to die just make a confession to you? And let them go to heaven? 
God, that's not right, we think. And it happens. Maybe some of you remember the name Ty Cobb. Great baseball player who lived a reckless, abandoned life and who was a, a, a vowed racist, hated people. Yet on his deathbed, a pastor came to him and he said, you mean this God would forgive me the way I've lived all my life if I just confess him now? He said, yeah, he will. And so he did. Is that fair? No. But it's generous. And all of us can be thankful that we have a generous God. Amen. I never know where my sermons are going. Um, as I, I preach them, um, I've got one more story to tell. But we're going to sing a different hymn than just in the bulletin. This one you know, it's number 330, for those who like to put your bulletin in the hymnal. So you'll have it available to you. I want to tell you one more story. It's about a young boy. And uh, he loved television. These were the early days of television. He loved Captain Kangaroo. Remember that? Captain Kangaroo. And he loved Mr. Rogers. And he would, would schedule his life around watching those TV programs when they came on air, back when stuff came on the air, right? <laughs> and he, um, he heard that one day Mr. Rogers was going to visit Captain Kangaroo and they'd be on the same television program together. <sighs> You can imagine how excited that little boy was. Mr. Rogers and Captain Kangaroo. And so he was there in front of the television when it came on air. And he was so excited. And it, it came on. And after a few minutes, he walked out of the room. And his father said, what's wrong, son? Your favorite two people are on television. He said, it's just too good. It's just too good. Well, that's what God's grace is to us. We're undeserving, but it is just too good. Let's stand together as we sing.
eat again, may his countenance shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.